Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here, and in my tutorial on Greebles, I explained how I used Cinema 4D to make my Greeble text. But I've been asked by a few people to walk through the process, and I'll even try to show you a couple of extra tips. So here I am in Cinema 4D, and I'm going to add a text object just by clicking here and selecting text. Then I'm going to go into here and change the text from the word text to Greebles, right? I also chose for the font um, something like, I went with, uh, I think, Rob Robotron or something like that. Let me see if I can find it. But you can use whatever you want to use. Let's go with Russo 1 even. That looks cool. All right. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be the middle instead of left justified or right justified. Okay, so I've got my Greebles text. And I think that I probably want to do some horizontal spacing here so that there's room for the Greebles to all kind of do their thing and not touch the other letters. Okay, so we can see we've got some text here. And again, just so you know, my display is set to uh, set to constant shading so we can see the lines. And as you can see, the front of the text currently does not have any lines. Um, what I also want to do is add in just a couple of subdivisions on the side so we get a little extra stuff there. Maybe even just two is probably fine. And, and then what I want to do is go from adaptive in the intermediate points, we'll go to, uh, let's try uniform. Okay, that looks pretty good. We get lots of squares. This is all looking nice and sweet, but the front of the letters don't have any lines on them. So what we need to do is go into the caps and we need to do something similar. So we'll set the caps type from Ngon to, let's go with regular grid. That looks pretty good. You could also try something like quadrangles, but I think regular grid is where I want to be for this. And that looks pretty good to me. So with that done, I'm going to go to file, export, and wavefront object, just as we did in the tutorial. And I will click OK. And from here, I'm just going to save it as Greebles text. And I'll click Save. And we are ready now to jump into After Effects. OK, before I take this any further, you may be wondering, why am I using text from Cinema 4D instead of using Elements text? It's a great question. So the thing is, Element does, in fact, have the ability to choose a text layer and to then go into Element and use it as the base for an extrusion. And that's pretty good. It, like, if you're just trying to do text that looks like this, it's really excellent for that. But if I go into my wireframe mode, I can start to see that there is going to be stuff that's going to keep us from getting what we want. Now, I do have the ability to come down into the text here and change the uh, some of the settings to get to something that might give me a little more of what I want, right? Where I saw an improvement is right here when I go to surface options and I choose subdivision level and I make it something like, let's say we go with two. Now you can see at first at first glance, like, wow, that is a lot of segments and it's, it's pretty good. Um, and again, like if you were trying to make your text look a little cleaner and in element, this is a great way to do it. But there are challenges that come with using text in element. And one of those examples is right here. Plus, if you're dealing with things like spikes or strangeness in the font type that creates weird shapes, Cinema 4D has a little more control over this. In the end, when I go and try to use the text from element as a base, for the Greebles type text, you can see it's really not ideal for this kind of effect. I mean, there is text being created from the little shapes that I've used, but obviously you can't really read it. It's just not a great solution. So in this kind of situation, Cinema 4D is the best option for creating 3D text that will give us our really cool Greebles look when we're done. Okay, so here I am back in After Effects where we left off in the last tutorial and what I'm going to do is get rid of the glow layer for now. We're going to replicate this again later. Get rid of that layer that we're using as a glow. And I'm coming back to my, my main Greebles layer here. And I'm going into the scene setup. And I'll click that, which brings me into Element. And from here, I'm going to choose to import a file. And I'm going to import our Greebles text. And I'll click Open. And I'll click OK. So from here, the first thing I need to do is to get this Greebles text out of the folder that it's in. We need to treat it like it's its own object. And as you recall, in the last tutorial, when I was creating the base object, the, the object to be used as a particle grid, I had to come into here and I had to change this from particle to particle grid. Okay, so that's done. And the last thing I might want to do right here is just normalize the size. It's going to make it a lot smaller, but I'll be able to adjust the size in the comp. But I want to be able to work with it like this. Okay, so that's the first things first here. We've done that. I'm going to click OK. Now, 
You can already see that I forgot to do something, which is I have to get rid of the other object being used to generate the cube shape. So I'm going to jump back in and I'm going to delete the cube. So I'll come down to the bottom here. Where we've got the cube that's being used as the base object. And you know what? I'm going to get rid of this cube too because I just don't need to have it because it's what makes up the base of the cube, but we're working with text now. So I'll delete that as well. Now I'm going to click OK one more time and come out. And we've got this kind of a mess sort of thing. I'm also going to rotate around a little bit, get it to here. And it's very messy, but under there, hidden under there, is some text. And the way we're going to do this is, first thing is I'm going to scale up the size of the shape quite a lot. Right? Even so, I'm starting to see text in there, but it's because the shape is so small and the objects are so big, the particles, I'm just going to have to come into the particles here and start lowering the size of the particles as well. And it's a little too little. So if I were to pull out right now, and that's what I'll do, so let's just get myself pulled out here, you can see that I've got the word Greeble. So now you see that it's really that easy to just change it from, I was using a cube, but here I took text from Cinema 4D and I created this look. The other thing is, in that tutorial, I showed the particles separating. So let me just quickly show you how to do that. So here's how separating it works, and it's super simple. I'm gonna go into the replicator effects right here, and I'm going to go into scatter. And from here, I'm going to choose Z scatter. And as I crank that up, you can see that the shapes begin to separate, the 3D objects begin to separate. I'm holding down shift to really get that out very, very far. You can see we're really scattering that out a lot. Let me go even further. Okay, I'm also gonna, uh, get my camera aligned so that we're right in the middle of it, right? So let's just okay. And then what I did was I added in a null object to control the position of this stuff right here. So let me go into my group utilities and I'll create a null that will control the position of the entire replicator effect. But first things first, I need to animate this separating and uh, rather separated coming back together. So I'll create a keyframe for Z scatter on the first frame. And why don't we go to like, I don't know, two and a half seconds later, and I'll set that down to zero. So the quick version of that is you can see that the pieces all begin to come together. The problem is I want it to fly through the camera sort of. So I move the camera in part, but the part of it, again, I said is I'm just using the null object. So let me just animate the null, hit P for position, and um, I'll set the position right here at the end. This is where I want it to be at the very end, uh, but at the beginning, I'll have these moving towards the camera. So let's just get this really past the camera as much as we can. Okay, that's good enough for what I want to do here just to demonstrate it. And I'll also set these keyframes at the end to ease in so that they'll slow down and stop. Just doing a quick RAM preview. And we can see we're flying through the pieces, or rather they're flying through the camera, and they're coming together to form the word Greebles. From there, you can use the other scatter effects, and you can maybe even add in some random rotation. But the bottom line is the, the main part of that effect is just animating the Z scatter, and uh, there you go. That's it. Anyway, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. I'll see you soon.